Hey folks, it is January 9th, 2020. We're back for a new year of Proto School Fun. I'm gonna click my Brady Bunch view so we can see all of our faces. Um, so we have updates. This, this community call is taking place monthly now and we did this month a week late in part so that we could have this moment of introducing you to the change in our team that's upcoming. Um, and because we don't get a lot done over the holidays, but we have updates from the whole month for you today and staffing changes and a cool update on the docs, uh, the docs site, which is great. So we're looking forward to sharing. So let's get started here. So first thing I want to do is welcome our newest team member. Do you want to take a sec to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm Jose. I'm, I'm currently in Dubai and I'm I'm with the, the Moxie team, so Kai is with Jill, and uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, helping the um, Proto School website. And yeah. Yeah, awesome to have you here. And it's been great. You've been taking a lot of initiative and jumping right in on stuff and already cranking stuff out. So it's awesome to have you. The sad news okay. is that the reason we have Jose is that Jill is leaving us to go to another project. So, Jill, you've been awesome to work with. We've had such a great time with you and your work, like getting the files, uh, the regular files API thing out in particular and tons of work under the hood. That's going to help with all of the errors and stuff. People won't be able to see it when it's going right, but it will make a huge difference when things are going wrong under the hood to help us diagnose. So that's been great. And we're sad to be losing you. Um, all right, let's hop into, actually, I'll do this first because Otherwise, I will forget. Um, I'm going to share my screen for a second. So this is the new so this docs dash beta dot ipfs dot io um, is the new ipfs documentation site, um, which is really nicely formatted a lot of the nav structure has changed here there's nice search this search for right now um pulls from headers within the docs so you can get directly to what you're looking for um and one of the cool things here i'm trying to think which yeah so there are pages here for missing content um and there are actually bounties out on some of this content um johnny matthews who's running this documentation effort is looking for volunteers to help contribute content so you'll see on this on pages like this like hey this is a topic we know we need and we've put it in the right place in the nav structure for you but we need help writing the page or we'd love feedback on how important is this is to you those kinds of things and then on any of the pages you'll see um a lot of links at the bottom where you can suggest new content if you find a typo you can quickly get right to github to either open an issue or just go ahead and help us fix the typo so i just wanted to share this work from our uh colleagues on the broader ipfs team because it's really helpful and this is a resource for any of you who are leading proto school events that you can share with your um share with your users your learners um that they can use as well and there are links now. So if we go to just the normal, if we go to the normal site, you'll see that there are on each page, there's sort of a way to get over to the new version of it. Um, so moving forward, I think we'll be trying to make the make adjustments on the new site and probably not refreshing the stuff here, but just wanted to let people know that that's happening. It's super cool. So congrats to the whole docs team that's been working on that. And now let's get into our Proto School updates. So um, a couple of things on the kind of content development front. Uh, one of the things that I've done, we've had an issue going for a while to kind of figure out what content from IPFS Camp 2019 is most applicable to Proto School. And Jill and I did a lot of work to figure out what that is, and we've taken a few steps towards that. So there's a link in the notes here to the summary of our plan, which links out to specific issues on, for example, new tutorials or UX improvements that we can make based on some of that stuff. Um, but one of the things that we have done is in the resources pages, now you'll find both the lifecycle of data on the DWeb course and the how IPFS deals with files courses included. Those are awesome videos that are really easy to follow along with. You don't have to be 
coding as you go. Um, very beginner friendly. So those are things if you were looking for someone to, to show at your um, chapter, you could even play one of those videos at one of your events if you wanted to. So that's a great context there. And there are also um, links to slide decks that you can find in other places as well if you want to look at the source materials for those. So just a little bit on content development this month, but we have great plans ahead for new content based on, uh, mostly based on those two tutorials, actually, those two workshops um, have great beginner friendly stuff. So we'll probably start using our multiple choice format for some of those where the coding exercises aren't quite the right choice for it. There's a little, there'll be a lot of conceptual stuff about what is pinning and uh, how do we actually request stuff from peers on the network? Those are a lot of the questions that we get from new folks. So looking forward to making some content on that as we go. Um, next up, so kind of learner experience and UX type things, stuff under the hood. Um, one of our users discovered that we were completely missing a page. Like the last page in the lesson was just not rendering ever. It was getting jumped right over to the resources page. So after we fixed that, I added a new um, test to Cypress to make sure that we're actually rendering all of the pages that exist, which seemed why. So we have we have blocked ourselves from making more errors like that in the future. Um, and we also have a few things that we need to retrofit. Um, there, IPFS continues to improve as we go along, and we need to kind of keep up with those changes. So quite a while ago now, um, it became no longer necessary to use that two base encoded string to get the sort of string hash value out of a CID object. You can just now use two string. Um, and some of our some of our lessons in the DAG tutorials were displaying big objects in an unnecessary way when all we needed was the CIDs. So I've gone back and retrofitted those. And then Jill, you want to share what you've been up to? Yeah, so I added in the, the point where um, I've been working on a way to, in the catch-all errors, um, where the problem may be from a, very, uh, from, um, from a validation uh, issue from the, from the lesson, uh, we've added a, a link to create a, a, GitHub, a GitHub issue uh, with the code already in the issue itself. So the user has more of a it's more of a an easy time to to create the issue to help yeah. us improve the validation. Yeah, it's awesome, and I like the distinction that's made there. And um, Alex Pot C days um, opened a PR that we're still kind of adding to with a lot of this extra error handling under the hood. And one of the important things it does is help us distinguish between different kinds of errors. Like there's a big difference between you gave the wrong answer to this problem and we're giving you this error to tell you what you did wrong versus, oh, we built this whole thing wrong. Whoever authored the tutorial forgot about something when they were putting in their conditionals for validation, et cetera. So this is great for um, helping us discover what the right thing is so we can provide really useful feedback to the user. So that's awesome. And the library that you found, Jill, to help us like put the code, pre-fill that, I think after we merge this one, um, we'll be able to go back to some of the other places where we're pre-populating issues and add them just to other kinds of lesson feedback ones other than the error handling. So that'll be awesome. Um, and then, Zay, you want to tell us about what you're up to? Yeah, so I basically, uh, I'm working on, actually, I just wrapped up, so almost ready to, to deploy. Um, having a congratulatory a congratulatory message to the user that they completed a tutorial and then a link to share on Twitter so that you can actually feel accomplished for <laughs> finishing the, the tutorial. Actually, when I tried it, I kind of felt like it was missing it. So now <laughs> it's a, a nice touch now. Yeah, that's awesome. We have, we, we have asked people when they authored the tutorials to make the success message on the last one say something about the fact that they've completed all of them. And there are, you know, check marks coming on the main screen for the tutorial, those kinds of things. But it's great to have something that's popping a little bit more to say congratulations and give people a chance to share the love on social so easily. So it's awesome that you've been able to pull that together really quickly. Um, so next up, some updates in the, on the community side. Um, 
So a couple of things that are really important if you're a chapter leader watching this, if you look now at the resources page within our organizing repo, um, you'll find a new section on event materials. And there are a couple of things there that are useful, some of which are new this month and some of which you might have missed last month. So one is a Proto School branded slide deck template that's super flexible. Um, Agata on the team here at Protocol Labs put that together for people. There are formats for um, Google Slides or PowerPoint or a Keynote, whichever you're using, really easy to edit. Um, so if you're looking to just make some kind of introductory talk that you do at the beginning of your thing before you have people try the tutorials, if that's something that you can use and adapt, just be careful about making sure you're replacing other people's bios or whatever, you know, whatever you see, somebody's face, replace it with your face, all that kind of stuff. But um, it should be pretty self-explanatory. And the other thing you'll find there is links out to um, presentation materials that people are comfortable with you using. So one of the links you'll see goes to the IPFS community repo. And there, um, Molly McKinley has put up a new list of presentations that can be shared and reused. So some of those are the two that I mentioned earlier, the workshops where you have the videos there or the slide decks. But one of them is a talk on, I think it's called how IPFS works approximately. And it's by Stephen Allen. He delivered it, I think, at, in Osaka at a meetup in October. And our video guy has taken that and made it really nice. You can see the slides next to Stephen talking. And then we've provided an editable version of the slide deck. So you, as a chapter leader, can review that, see what it's like when someone delivers it, and then take those slides, edit them, as you need to, and then deliver that yourself if that's something that you think your users would find helpful. We know there's there's a lot of you who want to incorporate other formats of content besides just the Proto School tutorials. So trying to make that possible. And we're using this linking strategy intentionally as opposed to copying the presentations onto our site so that we're not trying to keep things up to date in multiple places. But um, if you know of other great presentations that people may want to use, feel free to submit a um, a PR to suggest things to add that we could link out to that are great resources. Um, so take a look at that. That same resources page also has information on things like um, creating a welcoming environment with your code of conduct, how to get proto school stickers to give out at your events, all those kinds of things. So if you haven't checked it out yet, please do. Also, um, the Seattle chapter, I think probably within the month, added notes to the discussion in the organizing repo on. Uh, hosting our first event, what worked well, what could be improved, et cetera. And that's a great thread for anybody who's just getting started. Um, and we have a few new chapter requests in. We have two from India, one from Florida and the States, and we have some older ones. And the next steps on those, we're actually waiting on a review of the results of our local leadership survey. So huge thanks to everyone, whether you're a chapter leader or someone who's interested in becoming one or um, teaching proto school in other places. Um, we have great feedback from that and we're going to review that and see what it is that folks need moving forward if we're providing you the resources you want, if you're finding the existence of these uh, chapter repos helpful to you or if they're actually adding more work to you, etc. So our goal is to make sure that we can really scale community growth as we move forward and Jose and I will probably be, be building out some tools and changing the website in a few ways to create more of that um, ability for you as we move forward. So stay tuned. Hopefully by our meeting in February, we'll have a bit more information for you on what the plans are there. Um, and I think that's what we have for you today. Anything else that you two think of? Awesome. All good. Cool. So looking forward to catching up with more of you in the in this time to come. Oh, one other thing I should mention. Um, we do have an issue open. There is a request to document what it's like, like what are the best practices for hosting, teaching a proto school tutorial, one of our traditional coding tutorials as a live event, making it really easy for people to get started with that. Both if you were, you know, there's the issue of running a whole chapter over time, which is its own thing to manage and has its own requirements, but we're looking for documentation on just 
what is it like to transform that digital experience into a live experience with mentorship in the room? Um, there was a session at IPFS camp on, on community stewardship led by a few of our chapter leaders, which was awesome. And there's sort of a subset of that topic that would kind of be expanded on this. So in our organizing repo, there's an issue there and we're looking for volunteers who have done this successfully using our tutorial content as the main content of their events who can start drafting up some of those best practices. And that's something that could be a team effort if a couple of people want to collaborate on it. So um, please chime in there if that's something that you're able to help out with. That'd be awesome. Great, well, thank you everybody. Um, super excited to welcome you, Jose, and super excited, super sad to lose you, Jill. Um, but you've been awesome and we're uh, looking forward to a great year ahead. So we'll talk to you all later. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.